Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm really excited today to finally be taking a look at another Marvel Select figure. It's actually the first one that I've got in 2024 and it's been quite a while since my last review which I think was The Invisible Woman last year. And last year was a good year for Marvel Select uh, but it's been a slow start so far in 2024. However, I do finally have the Crimson Dynamo in my hands and I'm really excited for this release because surprisingly the Crimson Dynamo never really gets much love in toy form. In fact, we haven't even had one in the Marvel Legends line. Well, okay, we did get one, but it wasn't this classic design. Uh, so we're way overdue actually having this character represented in an action figure. And he's certainly never been produced in a seven inch scale before. So without further ado, let's kick off by taking a look at this packaging. Now it is Marvel Select, Diamond Select packaging, which means it is massively oversized and very, very chunky. Um, now, depending on your collecting style, you may love or hate this. Uh, I, I quite like it. It feels like you're getting plenty of bang for your buck, I suppose, uh, but it does take up an awful lot of space. Now, if we look at the front of the packaging here, clearly this is mostly given over to the blister packaging. It is a window display. We see the figure and all these wonderful accessories on display here. The rest of it, there's not really an awful lot of detail uh, to really talk about or pull out from here, but this is still pretty presentable. It looks really good on display. If we look at the side panel, you'll see that they have opted for a photo of the figure. Uh, Marvel Select tends to be fairly inconsistent in this line. Sometimes they tend to give us actual images taken from comic books or source material, and sometimes they just give us a photo of the figure. Clearly this time they've opted for a photo of the figure, but hey, it's a great figure. It is text-free and it looks great on display when you put it on the side profile on a shelf. And then if we look at the reverse of the packaging, we have uh, some more colourful images, colourful photography taken of this figure with its various accessories and different looks. And again, largely text-free. This is really displayable, it looks really good, it's very exciting and fun and colourful, and I think it makes a great display piece. So what's the figure like when he's liberated from his packaging? Well, I've got some mixed feelings about this figure overall, but let's start off by talking about the actual presentation. As ever, this is an area where Diamond Select really shines, especially when it comes to their paint apps on their figures, which always draw out a lot of depth and texture. But before we get into that, let's take a look at this head sculpt. Now, interestingly, the head that he comes packaged with is actually the human head, the unmasked head, which is really cool. And I really like that Diamond Select think this through and actually give us the civilian identities underneath. Uh, I think that's something that you wouldn't tend to think of for some of these villains. So that's really very, very cool. Uh, it gives an extra dimension to the character and to the figure, I suppose, which is uh, really nice. And this is actually a really good sculpt. Now, obviously, artistic interpretation varies across comic books for uh, an artist from time to time. Uh, but I think they've got a pretty nice sculpt here. It looks pretty authentic to what we see on the page, generally speaking. And I think, as ever, the paint apps are really good. It's nice particularly to see uh, some of the, the grey hairs in the bottom of the beard there. Just gives it a little bit more uh, realism, I suppose. And you can see there's plenty of different washes running over the head and a number of different paints applied here to make this look uh, quite lifelike and, and, and realistic, I suppose. So I think this is a really nice choice to start off with. And if we then look at the body, the sculpting is really, really good. I can't really uh, criticize this. It looks uh, the part. I mean, it looks exactly what you'd see on the comic pages, what I tend to think of as the Crimson Dynamo. And I think they've done a really good job of capturing enough detail here with individual rivets and grooves, uh, but without going too heavy on it uh, and exaggerating it in any way. So it's relatively simple, uh, but clear and clean. And the paint or the lack of finish they've used on the plastic is really interesting because it's got a slight metallic quality to it where it really catches the light beautifully uh, in different places, which is uh, phenomenal. Uh, but then it also has a little bit of a very subtle wash running over certain parts of the body, particularly around the abs uh, there and in the legs and in the arms. There's little bits of darker areas which just give it a little bit more depth and texture, which is something I'm always looking for. It just makes it feel a little bit more realistic. It gives it like a little bit of shading and shadow uh, that just gives it uh, an extra extra dimension, I suppose, which just it finishes it off. So I think in terms of the overall presentation, uh, this figure looks absolutely fantastic. Okay then, now the articulation is well intentioned, but I'm not sure if it really works. There is a ball joint at the top of the neck that really allows the head to spin all the way around and lean a really healthy distance left and right. It can also nod up and down a pretty good distance too, so, so far, so good. There's ball joints in the shoulders that allow the arms to lift up and out. There's a complementary bicep swivel, the top of that shoulder pad also moves and rotates around with the arm as well, which is great, well thought out. There is a pin swivel at the elbow, which is disappointing. That allow the lower forearm to spin all the way around and hinge not quite to 90 degrees, more like 45 degrees, which 
Yeah, it is a shame. And then he has a pin swivel at the wrist, of course that rotates all the way around, and it will hinge forwards and backwards, but not a huge amount, and it's a bit of a struggle, to be honest. He also has a ball joint in the top of the torso, which does allow him to spin from side to side, which is great. He can't really lean left and right though, which is awkward and strange. And that also extends to him bending forwards and backwards. He can go back a little bit, but he can't really go forwards, and it's almost redundant to be honest. Now he does have a straight swivel at the waist, which will allow him to move from side to side. Again, this is a bit clunky and a bit chunky, and doesn't quite overlap. And then he has ball joints in the hips, allowing that leg to kick out to the side. There's the complementary thigh swivel at the top there, which is great. A little bit stiff on mine, but <laughs> once it wears in, it will loosen up, I'm sure. And then the leg will also kick forwards, and it will go back a little bit as well, which is great. We have another pin swivel at the knee, so of course that lower leg will bend to yeah, a good 90 90 degrees there and it will swivel from side to side and then of course we have a ball joint in the ankle allowing that foot to hinge forwards and backwards and pivot from side to side as well now accessories wise he comes fully loaded with an additional two pairs of hands a closed gripping hand and an open palm hand and two blast hand effects as well he also has an alternate helmeted head with different face plates. We have this first face plate, then we have this second one with a more orange visor, and we have a blast effect visor as well. And there's no doubt about it, there's enough here to keep you busy with all sorts of different <laughs> looks and dynamics for this figure. You can create all sorts of fun displays, and it, having these variations make it really fun playing with different options. So I really like uh, Marvel Select's approach to action figures lately. I think this works really, really well, having these very distinct different looks and accessories uh, to really diversify uh, the kind of displays you can create with your figures. And I think they look really, really good. I particularly like this combination of the vibe ahead with the uh, blast effects coming out of the hands. I think this looks really, really cool. And then of course we also have this, what I would refer to as like a Cyclops <laughs> kind of effect here, which again, it looks pretty striking when you put it on display. Uh, I can't deny it, this is, this is really fun. I really like that this plastic is translucent as well, so again you can shine a light through it if you want, and it looks uh, pretty cool. Now, in terms of scaling, Crimson Dynamo comes in at the standard 7 inches, which means he's pretty much on a par with Iron Man and any of the other Marvel Select figures. Where I did want to draw a comparison to, though, is another Iron Man villain in this line, Titanium Man. Now, as you can see, when you stand these two figures next to each other, Titanium Man is massively oversized. He's a much bigger, much broader figure on pretty much all counts, and the size contrast here is pretty stark. The thing that bothers me is I'm not quite sure this is accurate. Now, I could be completely wrong on this, but in my mind, my impression of Crimson Dynamo is that he should be on a similar scale to Titanium Man, or at least bigger and broader than Iron Man, and he's not here. So I'm not quite sure whether that's just my misinterpretation or whether the scaling is actually slightly off here. Okay then, so in summary, I'm going to give this figure four stars. And I did wrestle with myself about this one a little bit, to be honest. Now, as much as I really like having the Crimson Dino at last in my action figure collection, and I have to say, they've done a fantastic job when it comes to the overall presentation. I really like the choice of plastic slash paint they've used on him. I like that there's some shading there, even though it's very subtle. And he comes with some really fun accessories as well. Where the figure really falls down for me, though, is in the articulation. And it's not that the articulation scheme is bad, because all the joints are there, all the points of articulation are there that I would want. There's not much more that I'd really ask of this figure. The problem is more in the execution, uh, because I can't really get an awful lot out of this, to be honest. Uh, it does feel very blocky as a figure, so it feels like I'm quite limited in the kind of poses I can really uh, get out of him. Um, so I haven't really been able to do anything particularly exciting or dynamic with this figure, and a lot of that is because of the torso itself is so restrictive. Despite them having a ball joint in the top of the torso there, and obviously the swivel at the waist, it still is isn't quite malleable enough for me to be able to do what I want to do. Likewise, the arms don't really work that well because of the, the, the pin swivel that they have and the fact that they don't really bend that far. So you feel quite limited in being able to get him to curl his arm up uh, and do anything particularly exciting in this area. So it feels a bit limited. It looks great, but it looks a little bit like a statue, which tends to be one of the recurring issues that we've seen across the years of Marvel Select. Although in recent years, they've made great strides in this area. So that's a little bit underwhelming, I'm afraid. And for that, I'm gonna to have to remove a star. But otherwise, this is a really fun figure. And I can confidently say he is the best Crimson Dynamo figure on the market at the moment, because by default, he is the only Crimson Dynamo figure on the market at the moment. So if you like the character, I wouldn't hesitate to pick him up.
If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.